it's your girl, and uh, I got some fun things planned for you guys today. This is going to be a very exciting video. If you can't already tell, I'm just very excited to get to this video. So I'm doing something today that has come highly requested, and no, it is not a room tour, because that would literally take a million years. However, I'm going to give you guys something maybe even better, and that is a shelfie tour. Now, a shelfie tour has come highly requested. I'm always posting my shelves on Instagram and on Twitter, and of course, you guys can see the big beauty there in the back. So we're going to do something fun today, and we are going to film it, and we are going to go shelf by shelf, and I'm going to show you all of the wonderful and mystical magical things that are on that shelf, as well as some of the secrets that I've been hiding, because secrets. We have a visitor today. Say hello, Zoe. Bonus points for doggy footage. So we're gonna jump into the shelfie tour together. Let's get started. So this is my first shelf. This is kind of like my Star Wars, Mass Effect, you know, other fun things sort of shelf. So I've got my Black Canary Barbie, who I love. She's like one of my most prized possessions. And then if you look over here, I have the Catwoman Barbie doll. Again, another one of my most prized possessions. I love these little babies so much. They just, they mean the world to me. So if you look on top here, does anybody remember Sum Sums? Because I remember Sum Sums and I wish I would bring Sum Sums back. So I have a Sum Sum for Han Solo, Princess Leia, I have uh, Greedo, and then I have my cute little Marvel one. So I have Spider Woman, who I've always really loved, and then Spider Gwen. And when I got Spider Gwen, I was really, really big into Spider Gwen, but I'm not as into Spider Gwen as much anymore. And then if you look over here, we have uh, DC's version of Sum Sums, which is Kawaii Cubes. And these bombed, but uh, I got Red Hood, I got Catwoman, I got a little Green Arrow, and then of course a little little Nightwing, little Nightwing. You love him, and then of course, you know, you guys know, Mass Effect is it means everything to me. So I have my little Mass Effect shrine here with my little action figures from Mass Effect Two. I have the team print, which is signed by Steve Bloom, who voiced Grunt, and of course Jennifer Hale down here, who voiced. Commander Shepard. My goal is to eventually have it signed by everybody. It's going to be a long and hard project, but this thing will get filled, I promise. So I have my little Funkos. So I have my little Ahsoka because she is the queen of my life. Um, I absolutely, so I'm like obsessed with Rogue One. So I have Bodhi and then I have the boyfriends, Trout and Baze, of course. And then over here, I have the original squad, you know, the originals. So Han Solo, of course, Princess Leia. Don't worry, there's tons more Leia's somewhere else that I will show off eventually. We've got Return of the Jedi Luke, because it's my favorite version. And then a lonely, lonely Poe Dameron, because he's really the only one from the new trilogy that I care about. So that is shelf number one. It doesn't get a whole lot of love just because I, uh, I have to be on a step stool in order to film it. So it doesn't always get the most love, but it is one of my favorites. So we're officially getting into some fun stuff now. This is the first shelf, I guess you could say. And this one is just a nice little area for some statues and some pop Funkos. And these are some of my absolute favorites. So I've got, and let's start here. So I've got my Black Canary. This is the Diamond Select statue. And these Diamond Selects are like one of my absolute favorites. They are really affordable. They're only like $45. Um, but look at how nice and detailed they are. Like they're ridiculous. Um, we'll get back to the big boy. But if you come over here, my Huntress statue, this is also part of the Diamond Selects line. And you know, like, you know, I just have to have the birds of prey together. Like, come on, man. Uh, so like I said, we're going to get into the big boy. I promise we're going to get into the big boy. But I got a little lone Aquaman. I really want to find him in a box one day to go with the rest of my box pops. But I found him at a convention as is. So that's where he'll stay for now. 
I also have a little lone Nightwing over here as well, if you didn't see that already. He was one of the first pops I ever bought, and this was before I saved boxes. Now, if you look in the back, you can see a lot of my pops, and I try to keep them organized and themed. So, of course, we got the Aquamans over together. We have our Jason Todds. We have a lone Bane, but he's with his friend El Diablo, so it's okay. My girl Rose Wilson. We got Batwoman. And then, of course, the lovely, lovely Birds of Prey. And Carrie Kelly, of course, because who could forget her? And then I told y'all we were swinging back because this... All right, so I lied. This is actually the most important thing in my collection ever. Black Canary, Green Arrow. You guys know, I just, I love them so much. Look at them. I just, I love them. They're my favorite. And I still can't believe that I got this statue. Like when I was still on Tumblr and I was big on Tumblr, uh, everybody sent me a message when this was revealed and was like, oh, you need to have this. And I was like, but it's also $300 and I'll never be able to get it. And then somebody surprised me with it for my birthday. So they're here on the shelf. And that is officially shelf two. It's so pretty. I really love, I really love the pops in the background. And it's something that you'll see on other shelves that I tend to do a lot, but I just really think that the box pops with the figures in the back of my bookcase just look really, really nice. What do you think? It only took us three shelves, but we're finally, look, there's finally comic books, you know, because after all, I am that comic girl. But of course, we're going to start with the lovely ladies in front of the comic books. So these are my DC Universe ladies busts and statues. I absolutely love them, as you can tell, and I'm hoping to get more into my collection. Um, I only have a few right now, but I have Raven. I have Big Barda. I have Black Canary, Batwoman, and of course, Cheetah. Actually, there's a little fun fact with this Raven. So when I got her, she was really smudged. Like somebody had taken nail polish remover and tried to clean her and it wiped off some of her paint. So her entire outfit, cloak and all, is actually painted by yours truly. So it's a little darker than the original bust, but I really like it. And honestly, you can't tell the difference. Uh, but that's my fun fact of the day. But you're not here to hear me talk about statues. Let's get into the books. If you haven't been able to tell already, this entire shelf is nothing but DC Comics. It's a lot of DC Comics. And, uh, you know, for somebody who hates Batman and talks a lot of shit on Batman, your girl sure does have a lot of uh, Batman and uh, Bat-related books. But let's be fair, this is how I started, is with Batman. So I gotta give him credit where he's due. I have some of my favorites in here. We got Birds of Prey, of course. The DC Bombshells, Catwoman. And of course, the start of Green Arrow and Gotham City Sirens. But what's fun is, uh, half of these books I probably haven't even read. Like, let's be honest, like, this Batgirl book, I've had this on my shelf for a year. And I finally read it yesterday. So, I'm slowly getting there. Quarantine is forcing me to read what I have on my shelves. So I think, I think I'm gonna read these next. This is Catwoman by Ed Brubaker. And of course, Catwoman by Jim Ballant. Now I started reading this one, but I never finished it. So I think I'm in a Catwoman mood. And then let's see, let's see what's up here. What's up here? So we have, oh, if I can get them. So we have Black Canary, Ignite by Meg Cabot and Kara McGee. This is a really great all ages story featuring Black Canary. I really like this book a lot. It, If you're a hardcore Black Canary fan, you might not enjoy it as much, but I love my girl Dinah. I love all of the cute little references in it. It's just, it's a really good book, especially for younger readers. But if you're a Black Canary fan in general, I definitely recommend picking this book up. What else do we have up here? Hidden Away. Aw, I do not love this. Little moments like this that make me cry and I miss her. So I'm a huge fan of getting trade signed at comic conventions versus like say single issues because when you take a trade to be signed, especially when it's from an artist, oh, look at that, that's familiar. You get really cool things like this. So there's gonna be a lot of signatures on this um, shelf that I'll be showing off for you guys. But 
it's little things like this and little little drawings in your books that I absolutely love getting a trade signed versus say a single issue. So when I organize my trades, I obviously, I start by publisher. So I have my DC stuff up here. When I organize my DC trades in particular, I always go alphabetical. And then when you get to things more like Batman, I tend to do them in say chronological order. So when they would technically, I guess, fall in the timeline. So we've got Long Halloween and then it jumps into Hush uh, and all of his stories. And then we have Damian Wayne pop up and then Battle for the Cow which eventually goes into this Batman and Robin run by Grant Morrison, which is the only book I will ever like by Grant Morrison. And then we've got the Continuum reset. So we have all of my new 52 books. And then eventually we've got one lone, we've got one lone Tom King book here, but eventually my entire Tom King rebirth collection will be here. So that's kind of how I organize my trades. Same with Birds of Prey. So we have, you know, the pre-boot stuff here and it going in chronological order. So Chuck Dixon and then eventual uh, Gail Simone stuff. And then we have the Rebirth stuff. You're not gonna see any New 52 here because Birds of Prey New 52 was trash. I really hated it. But like Catwoman, like it starts with, you know, I've got this one here, which is kind of like a collection of Catwoman. So that's gonna go first. But then we're gonna get into like this OG graphic novel that she had. And then we're going to go into Jim Ballon and, of course, Ed Brubaker. That is how I organize my graphic novels. Um, I know some people do it differently. Some people straight up do it alphabetical. I know there's some people that color code. Y'all are crazy. This is, this is what works for me. And this is what will continue to work for me. So that is officially shelf two. We're halfway there. We are officially on to shelf three. We're gonna start with the fact that uh, I have this gorgeously sexy, gorgeously sexy Jason Todd statue. And then if you look over here, we have my Ami Kami Mara. So this is one of my favorite statues too because it is from the Ami Kami line. And for those of you that don't know, Ami Kami was kind of like the first bombshells. So it was bombshells, DC bombshells before DC bombshells was a thing. It was a small run that was written by Jimmy Palmiotti and it was basically your favorite DC heroines as anime characters. It's actually surprisingly good and this is one of the few figures I have from it. I just love this little Mara. She's a mermaid and she's so cute and we love her. Look at her. Beautiful. And it's really hard to find. These figures are ridiculously hard to find. There's so many of them that I want but I'm not willing to pay the price but eventually I will own all of them and they will be mine. So these are some of my faves. These are my little Eagle Moss figurines. So these are really awesome. These are like usually like 15 bucks and I know they look super tiny. They are super tiny. But what's really great about the Eagle Moss figurines is they come with little magazines. And in the magazines, they tell you everything you need to know about a superhero. These were really, really great for me when I first started collecting because it helped me learn about DC superheroes that I might not have known before. So these are something that I'm always on the hunt for. They're really rare and super hard to find, but I always get really excited when I find them in a shop, especially if they come with their magazine. If they don't have a magazine, I won't even get them. Now onto the books. Of course, can you believe me? This, this entire chunk here, look at this, this, this whole chunk is just nothing but green arrow. And there's more green arrow up there. So there is a lot of green arrow, but he's not my favorite superhero for nothing. We've got a little bit of green lantern. I've actually never read these books and I don't know if I ever will. I have a really bad habit of picking up books when they're really, really cheap and putting them on my shelf and never actually reading them again. So that is an issue, but you know, we've got some, some goodies, some classics. Um, this is the entire collection of Judd Winnick's run, my absolute favorite run. I've got the Green Arrow Black Canary runs. I think I'm missing like one book. Got some of the Rebirth, I need more of that. And then surprisingly, I'm actually a huge, huge Hawkman fan. I have a lot of the pre-boots from Jeff Johns. It is actually like one of my favorites ever. I picked up Rebirth Hawkman. I know I keep calling it Rebirth, but anything that happened after Rebirth is Rebirth Fight Me. He's he's wedged tightly in there, but he's there. I need to read him. Come over here, oh look, Huntress. We know her. We did a video about her. 
fun fact, this book right here is actually one of the first ever books that I got signed. I have it signed by both Paul Lovitz and Joe Satin. And Paul Lovitz, who wrote the book, was such an inspiration to me when I first started collecting comics. He's actually the one that inspired me to become a comic writer and to become that comic girl. So Paul Lovitz, thank you for everything. We've got all of my Justice League books. This, this is such an underrated run. The Brad Metzler and Ed Benz run. I love this run a whole heck of a lot. It's one of my favorites. It's something that I'm definitely gonna talk about in a future video. This is a run that I feel like everybody should read for Justice League. Also, this is when Black Canary is the head of the Justice League. So maybe that's why it's my favorite, who knows. We've got some Mr. Miracle and some Power Girl and these books are really fun. I'll show you what's really fun about these books. But damn! And then I have this Power Girl book, which again, one of my absolute favorite runs of all time from DC Comics and one that is not talked about nearly enough. This also has a fun treat. Look at that. To Mars. Love Jimmy Palmiotti. I love Jimmy. Oh, and a double sig by Amanda Connor. I love these two so much. They're some of my favorite people in comics. And then, you know what I'm realizing? Looking at the shelf, I have two, two Nightwing books. We need to fix that. I need more Nightwing books in my future. That is officially shelf three in the books. Lots of books, lots of books. We're almost out of DC comic territory, I swear. There's only two and a half shelves filled with DC comics. But I told you, DC comics is life. It is life. So we're on shelf four and what is that oh my god it's marvel it's so cute and tiny look at this and there's a there's a little bit of indie here a little bit of indie so we're gonna get into that so of course you know what we gotta do we gotta start with the little figures so i got a little batman here and he is from the batman animated series or i'm sorry the justice league animated series that's what this line is from it's the same art style who cares and then of course we've got the best boy I love you. I'm sorry, I just like completely caressed you, but he loves me and he knows it. There's not a lot to talk about this one. I normally don't have a lot of figures on. Um, I usually set like my coffee or my drinks here on a coaster, of course. Where is my coaster? There's my coaster. Look, it says Kalalua. I picked this up from a convention a couple years ago and it's one of my favorites, but it's completely hand drawn and then put on, I guess, like a, just a regular old tile. But I've had this for like six or seven years and he still holds good to me. I love this little baby. But let's get into the books cause that's why you're here. Uh, so Secret Six. Oh, I've got the entire, look at that. The entire Secret Six collection, the entire one. This is, this is, listen, listen, Lex level for a second. Lex level. This is probably one of the best DC comics you will ever read in your entire life. I will get into it more at some point, but Secret Six, has a very special place in my heart. Also, it is super queer without being in your face queer. And look at this, it's queer. Just, just read the book, read the book. It's so good. Of course, I have all of my Secret Sixes here. I have the Secret Six New 52 run as well. However, I only have volume two. I need to get volume one. Again, this was a case of, I saw it for five bucks and couldn't not get it. All of my Suicide Squads. I really love the New 52 run on Suicide Squad. A lot of people talk shit about it, but this run has a special place in my heart as well. And again, we'll talk about it in a future video at some point. Superman and Batman. This this shelf has all of the good runs on it. The Superman Batman run is another one that I really, really love a whole lot. We get into our Teen Titans, our Wonder Woman. Look how sad and pathetic my little Wonder Woman section is. We, we, I need to get more Wonder Woman. But to be fair, I do get a lot of my Wonder Woman stuff from the library, so. Wonder Woman, and then look at that. We are officially on Marvel. We're officially at the Marvel section. So look how fun this is. Look at this little book. You guys know I talk about this book a lot. This is my original Civil War, Marvel Civil War. It is a really, really crappy library binding that I bought off of Amazon for like $3, but I wanna get rid of this so bad, but at the same time, this is literally a piece of that comic girl history. So I can't get rid of it no matter how gross and sticky, sticky this is. I actually have not read this since I first bought it. 
So now that I know what Marvel characters are, I should probably read this. I'm gonna set this over here because we're gonna read it later. For Marvel, we've got, of course, like, listen, listen, listen. The only Marvel book you ever have to read. All New Wolverine, that's it. Just, just read All New Wolverine, that's it. Game over. We've got Angela. Angela is another Marvel character that I actually don't talk about a whole lot, but I really love her. Also, she is gay as gay can be. So if you are looking for a queer superhero book, read some Angela. Uh, we've got Hawkeye. This is ugly Hawkeye though. We don't talk to him. There he is. There's the trash monster. So I finally have all four volumes of Hawkeye. My little Hawkeye vs. Deadpool. Love this book. Uh, Moon Knight. Hello. Oh, this is the this is the weird one. So I only have one book from Jeff Lemire. So we've got some Star Wars. This is listen. I'm gonna level with you guys. I I'm not a big fan of older comics, but I bought this for oh I bought this for like four dollars or something ridiculous, and I just like the way that it looks. So I might never read it. And that's horrible for me to say, but at least it's pretty. We've got X-23, of course. This is another really, really great book that I feel like everybody should read. And then we've got some of our indie stuff here. I do have an entire indie bookshelf, which I will film at a later date, but I do have a lot of my Dynamite books. So my John Carter books that I love a whole lot, Painkiller Jane, which is my all time favorite comic book character. We love a bisexual woman. And then of course, that's Sonia. That's of course, we've got a little bit more indie over here. So I have Sweet Tooth. This Sweet Tooth book actually has a really cool sig. Look at this. Look at that. That That's really awesome. I got that signed by Jeff Lemire last year at Baltimore Comic Con. And he put a little, little Sweet Tooth in there for me. Another book that I always talk about. This is my very, very old copy of The Watchmen that I bought. I think I bought this from a Goodwill actually when I was living in college. So after I read the book and gave it back to my teacher, I knew I needed a copy of my own. So I bought this really busted original copy from like, I think it was like a Salvation Army in college. But if you open the pages, it is signed by Dave Gibbons who did the art. And this book actually has a really fun story to it. So it was one of my first conventions at Baltimore and he was signing and I knew I wanted this signed. But he had a ridiculously long line and I was not, I just, I could not, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I was kind of a jerk and popped at his table as he was leaving and was like, look, I know you're leaving, but this is the first comic I ever read. Will you please sign it for me? I was like, and he's like, oh, it was the first comic you ever read that I feel really honored. And we, we talked about it and we joked about it. And I explained to him that I read it for school and his words to me and I quote are, no wonder why American kids are so fucked up. Because if you don't know, Dave Gibbons is actually British and I had no idea when I met him. This is my fun story on The Watchmen. And then the last thing for this shelf is this giant, giant collection of Battle Royale. Uh, I eventually want to have a manga section at some point, but this book is just great. I'm going to be talking about it in a future what I've been reading. And I also want to put it in like a manga spotlight collection because this book was just out of this world and I couldn't put it down. That is officially shelf four. We have one more to go. We can do this. So here we go guys, we are on the fifth and final shelf. The shelf, I'll admit, it's, it's kind of a mess. It's kind of a mess. I kind of just throw stuff down here because it's the bottom shelf. We don't really see it a lot. So I've got my cute little, I've got some plushies down here, some Sailor Moon plushies that were sent to me by my best friend, Amelia. Um, she also sent me this cutie little shaman. She always said that shaman reminded her of me. So that's why I have this cute little shaman and she's my favorite. I got my little Chrom Amiibo from Super Smash Brothers. I have the other Crom, but he's on a shelf somewhere. Director Krennic, you know, cause Rogue One. This Catwoman is really fun. What's cool about this Catwoman is I actually painted her. So she was just a black doll, but it was obviously Michelle Pfeiffer. So all of the stitching I painted myself. We've got my revolutionary girl Utina box. 
that a friend got me for Christmas. I need to read those. They're going to be featured probably in a manga video at some point. So I obviously am a huge Star Wars nerd and as a kid I always wanted this doll but it was ridiculously expensive when it first came out. So I found her at a discount shop a couple years ago for like ten dollars and it's just wow it's gorgeous. I love I love Padme. So I am on the hunt for the rest of these collection dolls. So let's get into what actual books are here. So I have a lot of, I actually put all of my hardcovers down here. Um, my hardcovers used to be on the top shelf up there, but I've since moved them down here just because they don't always fit. So I have these really awesome encyclopedias for both Wonder Woman and Catwoman. This DC CoverGirls book that I bought for $5 at a Barnes & Noble. It is another one of my favorites. I bought it for like $10 but it's just absolutely gorgeous and it's got some beautiful covers and I really like looking through here. I also have this art book for the DC comic bombshells because you guys know I love the bombshells. So I've got some more beautiful, beautiful designs here by Aunt Lucia. It's just really awesome to be able to see all of the gorgeous concept artwork that he did for the bombshells. This beautiful Street Fighter book because if you don't know, I am actually a huge Street Fighter fan. So I absolutely love this comic. I haven't read it yet, but I collect some Street Fighter stuff. All of the gorgeous Eagle Moss magazines that I was talking about earlier. Look, it's my man's Black Canary. Oh, this Black Canary and Zatanna has a super special secret. <gasps> Look at it. This was, I met Joe Quinones a couple years ago and he drew this gorgeous, gorgeous Black Canary in my book. And I think that's actually when I started to fall in love with Black Canary. Speaking of things that utterly destroy me, this is, this is my favorite book that I own. So it is a, I thought it was a special edition when I bought it, but it is actually just the Green Arrow Quiver hardcover without the slipcase. However, what makes it super special is what's inside. So I had the pleasure of meeting Phil Hester a couple years ago. And we talked about my love for Mia Dearden and Connor Hawk and how much I just want them to come back into comics continuity. And I was going to commission him for a small sketch because I was a little broke kid and I didn't have a lot of money, but I wanted something small from him. And he surprised me with this absolutely just gorgeous, gorgeous image of Connor Hawk and Mia Dearden. Phil Hester is just one of the nicest people in comics. However, I went and made copies for myself because Something this beautiful can't just stay in a book forever. So I have a gorgeous little piece framed over here by my bed. And it's one of my favorite pieces that I will own forever and for always because it just means so much to me. So Phil Hester, thank you so much for doing that for just a small little comic girl like me. We also have my Green Arrow Black Canary, which also has a cute little secret. It has a very cute Cliff Chang drawing of Green Arrow. These are the original issues for Barrier that came out and I think I'm missing the last one. I am. I'm missing number five and this supposedly was never collected in trade. However, it might be a lie, but I need the last issue of Barrier. It's a Brian K. Vaughn story who also did Saga, so check that out if you haven't already. But that is the last shelf. We'll put the little people back now. Little people back in their homes. Perfect. And that is it. That is our first ever Shelfie tour. I'm going to apologize if it turned into like a 40 minute video, but there's a lot of shelves there. Like there's just, there's a lot of stuff there. So I hope that you guys had fun. I know I had a lot of fun filming it. I don't know if I'm going to have a lot of fun editing it, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I definitely want to do more shelfies in the future because as you can see, there is a lot. There's also another bookcase over there that I would love to film. There's just a bunch of little stuff that I would maybe love to film in lieu of like a full on room tour. I mean, I know I definitely want to do a room tour at some point, but like I said, it is is a lot. So as always, thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next one. Bye!